you had left. There we go. Yeah. Oh, shut up. I didn't know that did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was on this pocket. Your body, when you bend back, wants to bend the most where it's loose and not very much where it's stiff. Right. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> so your lower neck's going to be like, I'll do it, I'll do it, and then you end up hurting your neck. How you doing? Good. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Uh, I see your upper back and you had a car accident. Tell me. Yeah, I had a car accident in February of 2001. Okay. And I was hit from behind and my seat broke backwards. Okay. But I think I went forward and backwards um, and I lost consciousness. And it fractured my sternum. Gotcha. And just everything, whiplash, everything in the back was just destroyed. Were you in the hospitalized for that? I wasn't hospitalized because, um, well, I had a slight head injury and they sent me home with meds and things like that. So it was a small town that it happened in. Okay. And so I went home and then within days I was just constantly crying because that's when they found the fracture in so my they, chest. They didn't, they find, didn't it. find it in the, beginning. in the beginning. So you went to the hospital initially, but they didn't keep you. No, they didn't keep Right, me. didn't keep you. Then you're going home, you're and feeling... And I couldn't breathe, right. and it felt like someone was standing on me with boots, and yes. I just constantly crying, and finally they took me back. Went back, back and took a picture, saw his fracture. And like, wow. Yeah. And just what was the treatment? Was there much? There wasn't much really you much can, do can do for that. Right. No, yeah. they, so they can't just cast. gave you meds and exactly. Right. And it's been a vicious cycle since then. Tough, tough region because the chest mobility, the ribs are there to guard your organs. Mm -hmm. And when you have an injury to your chest, first of all, that area is already kind of protected. Then you have an injury; it protects even more. And then what happens is the adjacent areas above and below are going to be overstressed because. That middle back, upper back is really tight. Right. And and you also work, I see your public, so you're a lot of looking down. Yeah, I work over a counter and make the specialty meals. Gotcha. And things. So I stand on the concrete right. you know, the whole day. And a predominant amount of your time, obviously, is spent looking down. Yes. And anytime you're in a position more than 20 minutes, the ligaments that wrap your spine are stretched. And so there's ligaments on the front, there's ligaments on the back, and I can't imagine you're spending much of your day. No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> looking back no. so so it's 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 a balance of those two sides and so the joints on your spine have a lot of feeling and so it generally always feels better to that's why you see kids slouching and then you have an injury not only did you break your sternum or you mm -hmm. know the, the ribs there got in jammed right. in from this from the shoulder strap but you also the joints in your back most likely got injured now they didn't break you understand but there was joint injury at the very least. Well, that. now I have the arthritis, the gen right. degenerative disc disease, you know, right. all in the back from all everywhere I've messed up. So the alignment and the mobility from that car accident 20 years ago now puts you in a position where the areas above and below will, I only call it degenerating and I right. have some verbiage issues with that. But I think okay. it's, it's okay, no, it's, it's the right medical term. You're, right, you're, I got you. But I believe it to be more of a regeneration. The bones are regrowing larger as an adaptation to being stressed That's out too exactly. much. So yeah. it's annoying and, and it's pathological in the sense that the bone is now occupying a space that shouldn't be occupied by anything. Exactly. And now you're hitting a nerve and Ed might. Do you have symptoms going down your arms? Uh, no, I have had that and they went in and... Uh, How long ago and describe it for me? Uh, well, it was going not necessarily down my uh, arms, but down my leg, the back of my leg. It went down my sciatic. And burning, my, shooting? Uh, burning. Okay. Yeah. How far did that go down? I go down the just below, just really in my thigh. Okay. And uh, then when they did the procedure, uh, it took that away. What procedure did they do? Um... I go. I go every. Just conservative treatment, not not a surgical or. No, no, no. Or just the they go in and do uh, you know the cortisones and medical they, shot. They burn the nerves. They did and a nerve ablation. Like, yeah, I've oh had boy. that. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. When was that nerve ablation done? How long ago were you talking? About? Uh, a couple of years ago, maybe and, even. And you're it saying, wasn't that long ago. And you're saying you're constantly feeling burning in your back. My, the large muscles in my back. Mm -hmm always burn mm -hmm. it's just the level that it gets to it starts in the morning around three you know mm -hmm. but by the end of work i'm like crawling out of there what time I'm do like you get to taking work? What so much tablets so while you're working do you get up at three or what time do you get up uh at work no i work 
all it's kind of different hours but basically it's a nine hour shift Mm -hmm. so you know the beginning of my shift I'm so so and I've taken Tylenol and all the other products you can plus my large supply of meds that the pain center gives me gosh and the patch on my back I have yeah I got a lot going on for pain control nerves don't work right well what happens is it works for a while and then but if you if you have a nerve that's yelling and then we yeah. And we keep on trying to silence her. He keeps on screaming louder. And now what you're telling me is, Ed, he's so loud, I can't even cover up the nerve anymore. The nerves supply not only the function of your body, allow you to move and, and sensation, they also supply the healing energy. So if the nerves right. aren't hooked up properly, it'll be organ dysfunction. It'll be, you know, my, my knees are falling apart. My hips are falling apart. I've developed this lump. Sure. Sure, it's the from the hyperkyphosis. Trying it's, to get correct. rid of my pain. So the, it's okay. It's it's an avoidance, and I yeah. don't blame you for avoiding. There are monsters back here. I'd yeah. avoid them too. And if, if, does that make sense? If we don't talk and deal with the problems, they're just going to grow, and then your body's going to want to continue to getting away from them. Exactly. I don't blame you for avoiding them. The only way to get rid of it is to turn around, confront it, right? And oh my gosh, Ed, you're hurting me, and they're they're bigger than I thought. Well. Either that or we just don't do this then. And it's a process to go in there and deal with them. But well, I definitely saw that the work that you've done on your videos mm-hmm. and such, and it's the first time I thought someone could really help me because it seemed like you really understood what yep. was happening in my back. Right. we got to go in there and clean all those joints. Yes. And it's going to be a... And it's going to be a process. I'm prepared. Okay, all right. Get in the position that you're in. The joints are filled with fluid. There's a synovial joint capsule. So the more forward you are, the more swollen the joint is. Now there's air in those joints also, and sometimes when you compress the joint, that air gets released. But it being occupied with more fluid than usual, you might not get a click. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because of the posture, as we get you farther back, and so sometimes with this spine, I would see it maybe moves one or two bones in the first visit, or maybe not at all. Okay. And then as your care progresses, and I haven't felt that moving. Right. But it's a it's definitely a, a progression. It's like you're you start off here and then it's a diminishing returns curve. We're gonna go from positive five to positive three in a month. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. But to get from positive three to positive one takes that's a, a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And then once you're at positive one, to get to zero is like two years. Do you oh, understand? Okay, I got it's, it's a diminishing returns curve. Take a deep breath in, let the jaw relax, let your jaw relax open, and then exhale for me. Let the head go back. Just let the jaw open. Let the jaw open. There you go. Deep breath in. Very good. You did great. Breathe in deep. Head back. Let the jaw relax open. Let the air out. Very good. There we go. Deep breath in. You did great. One more. Take a deep breath in. I'm waiting for you. Just let the jaw relax. No sound. Just let the air out. There you go. All right. It's okay. All right. Stay there. You did great, actually. That was... That's, I, I was more that than was I... a lot. Yeah. <laughs> they're just... You, there, but there's going to be, like I said, we're going to start feeling, especially as I go in there with my elbow, we're going to yeah. go to a deeper level and we're going to wake all that up. Look, have you look, Turn your head towards me a little bit. There it's, I know it's a dance. There we go. Take a deep breath in and have you twist. I'm not going to fall, I promise. Exhale, twist. You're not going to fall. I got you. Twist. I got you. Breathe. It's okay. I got you. Breathe. Exhale. I got you. I'm not going to hurt you. Exhale. Good. Let's have me. Good. Uh-huh. Here we go. Breathe. Exhale. Uh-huh. Very good. I got you. Exhale, twist. There you go. Let's go face that for me. There we go. Part of the way this works is because your life is looking down, the upper neck gets tight. When your upper neck gets tight, the lower neck has to do extra work. When the lower neck has to do extra work, it, we try to get away from the lower neck and we avoid it. <laughs> when your lower neck is doing extra work, your actual upper back tries to assist in cervical work. So you actually torment your upper back because your upper back gets recruited to help you turn your neck. You see this frequently when people try to turn their neck. Instead of just turning their neck like this, they'll do this. Right. Right? Yeah. They, they, they turn with their shoulders, right? You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to turn with just your neck. So when you see people turning with their shoulders, they're recruiting their upper thoracic vertebrae, do you understand, to mm-hmm. assist in cervical rotation. You can do this but the thoracic vertebrae are going to get upset. (laughs) They're not designed to help you turn your neck all the time. And when you do that, they get inflamed, they get sore. They then want to be avoided also. That creates the hump. Pretty gentle here. There you go. I got your head. Nobody. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm waiting. Breathe. And the exhale. It's okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's okay. Yeah. That atlas is a tight one. <laughs> it's a tight. How that feel? You okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a tight atlas. There we go. Relax right here, chin up. There you go. Very good. You're great. You right? Yep. I'm gonna go deeper in a second. I that was round one. Yep. The idea is that we want as much functionality from your atlas as I can re restore. Yeah, I definitely had like I wasn't able to turn my neck for a long time after the accident. Right. So the upper neck got injured. Yeah. Upper neck jammed up. Lower neck got overstressed, and that, that process I just described happens. I have to undo it by restoring the first thing that stiffened after that accident, which is right up here. She's got a lump. Yeah, it's sore. Yep. So just the idea is that we're gonna. You do your work as best you can, being as mindful as you can. But I realize that we, you know, it's just the nature of the job that you have to look down. So right. what we have to do is at the end of the day, we have to counter stretch. Similar to brushing your teeth, you don't right. eat food and then not then forget to brush your teeth. We don't spend time during the day looking down and then forget to counter stretch. Otherwise, over time, your posture just keeps going more and more forward. That's what makes everything get so bruised in the backside, and that's what we're just trying to numb and gag. Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. Wow, guys, that's only. Um, it's just a vicious cycle. It's a vicious and cycle. I'm tired of it. You know, I got a pretty strong thumb, and that yeah is a knot. Yeah, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel it every day, really. Right. I just don't feel it to this level. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, move a little bit if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, just it's the same joint moving at, to a deeper level. It's maybe like a like a sliding door, like a door, a pocket door. You know, mm -hmm. it slides a little bit, slides a little bit more until it fully shuts. Okay, and that's what the joints look like, little pocket doors. And so we're trying to fully shut the joint. There you go. I use the massage as a way to. Yeah, Speed I think up. that's the yeah. way. Yeah. The issue is that I've been going uh, uh, to people that just kind of jump right in. Right, they don't want to. You just crack and go, and you're just getting the it. easy ones. Does that make sense? Yes. You're not going to get the, the ones that are already moving are highly likely to be the ones that you move, and the ones that are really stiff probably not getting to those guys. Right. And many times, even with how I adjust your back, Ed, I think if you adjusted my neck a little differently, you get more pops. I'm not trying to do a full body adjustment. Right. I'm not trying to move every bone in your back. We're trying to adjust. That's why we say the word adjustment. It's actually a little bit of oxymoron to say full body adjustment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you're trying to balance the spine. It's more a full body manipulation at that point. We're trying to focus forces in certain areas and leave alone certain areas to balance and adjust the spine. Anyway, it's, it's supposed to be a technical thing, not just a, let's see how many pops I can get out of your back. 60% yeah. of the work in your neck is designed to happen at the top. So if we get your upper neck working properly, we're not going to have that excessive stress going to your lower neck and then the recruitment of your upper back. Very good. I noticed on your paperwork you said high blood pressure. How long have they had you diagnosed uh, with that? About five years. Uh -huh. What did they say it was? Do you remember the numbers they originally said? I don't. That, don't know. Okay. The difficulty with blood pressure is that when I was in school, or a little bit before I went to school, the top number was 150. They, they rate it in milligrams of mercury. It's like the blood pressure cuff and how much pressure it takes to, you know, the blood vessels to be able to right. go through the pressure on the cuff. So the number used to be 150 was this, what we call the systolic number, the top number. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in school, they moved it to about 140. And then I think in December of 2019, they just moved it to 130. Oh. So they keep lowering yeah. the target, <laughs> okay? So what was considered normal blood pressure 10 years ago is now high blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. This is, Dr. Red, I don't think so. This is the reality of what we're dealing with. The target's moving. It'd be like me just telling you that your ear's supposed to be over your shoulder, and then you achieve it, and then I go, actually, it's supposed to be an, ear, an inch behind. <laughs> well, what the heck, Ed? You're moving the target on me. I would be more curious where that number was, is my point. And sometimes, I had a lady the other day, even before they moved it to 130, she was 135, and they wanted to put her on blood pressure medication because she was borderline. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it was yeah, like, well, you, I said, you don't have high blood pressure. No. 
And she's like, well, they're saying I'm borderline. They want to get me on it. I'm like, no. no. Anyway, yeah, but well, good. there's two nerves that control your heart. One nerve is a gas pedal. One nerve is a brake pedal. The gas pedal comes from your upper back. Where that hump is in your back is where the nerves, called the cardiopulmonary nerve, that excites the heart. You, does this, you follow me? Right. So having soreness, how much, you know, a lot of soreness in here, Ed. Oh, yeah. That soreness goes to your heart and causes a false irritation to the nerve that excites your heart. Oh, High blood pressure okay. and soreness in your upper back are the same thing. Okay. This is not my opinion. Please Google cardiopulmonary nerve, T1 through T4 on the left side is where the nerve that goes to your heart from your back, from your brain. So they did studies in the 50s where they took salt, which is a nerve irritant, injected it into the nerve roots, and people had high blood pressure for the time it took for the salt to be absorbed. So anything that irritates the nerve can be lactic acid, can be bruising, does that make sense? And so yeah, exactly. what if your high blood pressure is because somebody's putting pressure on the gas pedal to the heart? Mm. And you can address that by stimulating the brake pedal called the vagus nerve. Cranial nerve 10 is the nerve that calms down your heart. So that's what the drug does. The drug stimulates the parasympathetic vagus nerve, do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And that's how we balance the blood pressure. Yeah, right there. And you've never had anything like this scraping or gua sha before, have you? Nope. Okay. Yeah, there's a little mark right there. Just some congestion around the atlas. We want to just free this up, get all the soreness out of here. Not filleting you. Be gentle on that lady. Yeah, there's just some acidity in there. Yeah. All right, I got gotcha. you. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. There's a process for doing postural work. You know, when can I start? And this, this is why people that just try to do postural work without being prepped, you actually hurt people, right? You end up just bending where you're loose, and then people get exactly. frustrated and go, well. I tried yoga and it hurt me, or I tried stretching and it hurt me, and the answer is the, you're correct. It did hurt you. You shouldn't be stretching until your back is prepped. And this is there's just all sorts of little marbles in here, and yes, we have to comb through all these knots. The knots are here because of your posture. The muscles are tight because of the posture, and they're trying to guard. And now the muscles probably are burning also because there's a lot of lactic acid. All that lactic acid then irritates the joints further. Well, everything healed like where it wasn't supposed to be, right? right? right. You know, and that's the issue. Is healed in avoidance. It stayed in the wrong place right. Right. all this time, and I've adapted around it. Right. We call it antalgia. Anta means away from, alga means pain. We go into avoidance, and then that becomes our new home. And now we have to be held by our hands and or maybe picked <laughs> up and carried back into our home that you used to reside in. and have forgotten about. At the end of making and breaking up sugar into ATP, there's a waste product called lactic acid. That's what you feel burns. Does that make sense? Yeah. Lactic acid is an acid. It irritates nerves. The muscles are producing a lot of it because they never, they never get to relax. And then at nighttime, it's all still in there. And then it's sitting around the nerves. So I put into a lay term, I say the word cleaning. You know, what do you mean by cleaning, Ed? I mean binding that lactic acid to oxygen forms carbon dioxide and water. We exhale the carbon dioxide. Does that make sense? So we have to drive oxygen from your blood into these tight areas. The areas are so tight that they've choked off their own blood flow. Okay, that's why the areas are so tender. All right, I'm sorry, I'm trying to distract you. It's okay. Okay, all right. If you can get in the ocean, it'd be great. The salt will, along with water, drink a lot of water, and then you soak for as long as you can in the salt. Okay. And what that will do today is that I've mobilized everything. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it can either go into your bloodstream from the interstitial, from the muscles, and then you urinate it out, or it go, can go right through your skin through sweat. Oh. And so the osmosis from Epsom salt, uh, the Epsom salt creates a higher concentration of salt outside your body, Water always goes from an area of low concentration of salt to areas of high concentration of salt. We call this osmosis. I'm not sure if I believe in osmosis. It doesn't, require, it doesn't matter if you believe in osmosis or not. It still functions. I don't know if I believe in gravity. It doesn't matter what you believe. Osmosis works whether or not you believe in it. Uh, if you put a lot of salt on the outside of your body, it will dehydrate your 
tissue. Does that make sense? Why do I want to dehydrate my body? Because with the water, you're taking the acidity. Do you understand? Yes. You're, 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 you can't wash your car with Mountain Dew. You can't wash your car with coffee. You need to wash your car with water. So we move water through your skin by osmosis. Make sure you drink extra water. Does that make sense? Because if you just do the salt without extra water, you'll just dehydrate yourself and then you have high blood pressure. <laughs> so, good job, Ed. So, <laughs> drink, drink, I just told you, drink water, get in the salt and keep drinking water and you will expel some of the acidity and then tomorrow morning, hey Ed, felt a lot better. I was a little beat up, a little sore from the treatment, but I see what we're trying to achieve here. Oh, that one's bad. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. We've got to turn around and confront it. I'm sorry. Oh, right there, I feel it right, right there. Wow. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's the one. That's the root. These are the roots of your neck. Try to go right, right at the edge yeah. of your tolerance, and we just hold. Okay. And every visit, we walk up this ladder, staircase of. And what happens is you'll feel like I'm putting the same or or less pressure. Does that make sense? Yeah. When in but fact I'm actually pushing harder. Oh, no, no, I'll yeah. be pushing okay. harder, and it you'll feel like better. it's the same or. And I feel the same as I did last time, <laughs> but I'm putting 50 pounds of pressure on your back versus 20 your first visit. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. And definitely. then eventually I'm practically sitting on you. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, it's the same pressure, Ed, and I'm putting 180 pounds of... I mean, yeah. And so that's what I mean by the ladder. And then when we fully master this, I'll be putting as much pressure on your back as I can, and you're just telling me about your day. Yeah. You're saying, Ed, so I was, I was up with my friends the other night, <laughs> you're saying, yeah. and we're having a good time together because we've worked through all of this soreness in here that you've been avoiding and what's been gagged and covered up I know, right next to that pain Yeah, it just feels like a real lump. Yep. Oh, wow. They're just joints. The more concerning symptom is that right leg sciatica. That's a disc injury. So because of the alignment of your upper back and chest and the stiffness up here, your lower back has been overstressed. And not just the joint was overstressed, but the disc is overstressed. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. And that's a much more difficult... That's why they do back surgeries. They do the rods and the discectomies because the... And how, so you, you're not, you're not current, you don't currently experience the sciatica, correct? No. Okay, when was the last time you felt that go down your thigh? Oh, that was a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. By part, here's, here's also some of my difficulty is that as I stand you upright, we have the potential to run into stuff down here. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I don't want you to be disheartened. Don't, you know, it's, it's a... We're going to run into some of the things that, see, it's, it's still there. Disc injuries don't disappear. Right. Does that make sense? They can be avoided, and you're like, Ed, I haven't felt it in years. I know, um, but it's in a closet. <laughs> it's still in there. Well, I almost thought that I didn't feel it as much because the pain level up high, it could be. like we're saying, is so high that, could be. like you're saying, if you fix the top, the bottom's going to show up again. You're in avoidance with the top, which makes the lower back feel better because you're in avoidance but as i as i correct this we're right, going to run into yeah, we're going to run into what you've been running away from yeah 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 these joints back here got injured also when you had the yes. sternum break there was injuries yeah. right in here yep that Nothing broke in the sense of something that you could visualize. Not that, nor that anything, not that anything could have been done to it anyway. Just like your right. sternum. But as a result of that injury, your back said, "She might get injured again. Let's lock everything down." All right. Okay, 
right. I know the edges. I see it. Part of the treatment is just laying on this table. This table prevents you from being able to round forward. So even just laying face down on this table, yeah. you know, I have people... Makes you flatter than normal. Right. Makes you, hold you at least somewhat near, near neutral. And that can be difficult for many new patients. So you're doing great even just... I think that's what the bed is at our hotel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, why is this bed so hard? Mm. Oh. I know. I'm going after the sciatica stuff here. Yeah. Sciatica, right? Yeah, this would be. Yeah, it hurts too. I know. You want to get. This is just, as I said earlier, as we stir up this, we're going to. Yeah. It'll. As the mark goes away, your ability to feel anything down your leg gets smaller. Gets, it decreases. Does that make sense? But we are stirring it up a little bit, so sometimes temporarily. And I felt more, you know. It, yeah. it does, we, do, we are stirring things up here in the process of expelling and getting rid of the soreness in your back. Going too hard, please let me no. know. Okay. There you go. A lot in here. Yeah. Here we go. There you go. I mean, must, must, must do the salt. That'd be the best treatment. As much time as you can give me today, tomorrow, as much. And I live in the Hey, salt. doctor's orders, go to That's the right. beach. That's right. I'm go good. to the beach, soak in the water. <laughs> yeah. 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 suntan lotion and get I out like there. I like that. Get a pina colada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you see that crown? Like, mm -hmm. There, right? You, Susan, right? Yep. Look at that. I feel it. It's internal injury congestion. It's okay. Well, there has to be somebody up home that can help you. you start washing or start, find somebody that will do cupping or something soft tissue wise. Yeah. I mean, I've tried, you know, acupuncture. It's too mild. Uh, it's too mild for, uh, you know, it can be deep tissue regular massages, you know, sure. but it's just not the same. I have two sides of my back. Oh, no. Front or not, this is what's been back here. This is just, I think of it very similar to my daily taking my trash out to my trash can. You know, there's a daily recycle. You understand your body's making new yeah. tissue, old tissue replaces the dead tissue. That old stuff has to be able to get out. If it's so tight, the circulation's poor, your body sweeps it underneath the rug, <laughs> right? And then it just ends up residing in the tissue as acid. In the interstitial, well, Ed, this is ridiculous, toxins. The liver and the kidney filter out toxins, which is correct, stuff that's in your bloodstream, right? right. I'm talking about outside of the bloodstream. <laughs> it's in the muscles. It's in the tissue, what we call the interstitial fluid, which is between muscular cells outside of the vascular system. Does that make sense? So it doesn't, it's not mobilized. It will, it is now. It is now. But, but, yeah. but it wasn't. And so part of what happens is, 
all this acidity goes into your blood, now your kidney and your liver have to contend with it. The seat belt, well before I think the 80s, we had just the lap belt, right? It was the, right. the belt that went, and I imagine you had a shoulder strap, right? In your car, there was a shoulder strap. Yeah. Came across your chest, okay. Yeah, so what that does it. is it presses into your chest. Before that, you would just fold around your waist and this injury wouldn't happen, right. does that make sense? But you break your lower back. Yeah. So the shoulder strap then puts a lot of force into your chest and then actually you damage your lower neck because there is no seat belt for your neck, right? right? right. So now right between your chest and your neck, that's where you get the most injured in that type of accident. Yeah, it was a drunk driver that ran a traffic light. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And I was only going like 15 and he just was speeding to make the light. That's so scary. Yeah, no, it's just, this has been residing here for... Mm -hmm. Here it comes, yeah. Very good. That is the mm -hmm. spot, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. oh no. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Ed. Not ground zero. Mm -hmm. Nice injury right there. Yes. Right there. You all right? Too much? No, it's okay. Okay, all right. All right. Here we go. I know we're going down. Holding. I'm not going to thrust. I'm just going to hold. Come down. Hold. Here we go. Oh, you're on the Okay, spot. okay. All right, come on. This all right, too much, too much? No, I did just okay. feel one of those knots. Little tiny thrust. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, good. I know I'm not under, this is really tough, I know. Once you can handle this roll or anywhere, life will get easier. All right. Right there. Yep, right there. I know all the spots, I know all the yeah, hiding I spots. I. This joint can take it, I promise you. It can handle it. I know it doesn't want to handle it, but this joint's a big whiner. <laughs> it's a big whiner, okay? You're not going to hurt it. It's going to hurt, but that joint's got to be quiet. It's got to yeah. stop. It needs to be a big boy. Start <laughs> joining the team. Ed, I don't appreciate that. I know. My new joke is, new study shows that football players that spend their entire season on the bench never get concussion. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> If you don't actually get on the field and play football, you don't get injured, right? It's the only the players that are on the field that are injured. So the only the vertebrae that actually show up and actually do things, they're the ones that have right. to contend with life and the forces that are that are thrown at them. And there we go. Oh, I didn't even know that hurt. Right, I know. <laughs> well, right, because the joint doesn't move. Yeah. You don't you don't talk to this joint. I need you talking to him. I need you talking to that joint. There's a joint in there. It's a knuckle. It's the most powerful joint in the body. Wow. Four inch long joint. That's a lot to deal with. I'm so sorry that that's been in there. And yeah, definitely. That's, that's, that's yeah. all what you're feeling that's residing along your back and you're going, I can't believe no yeah. one's, we're just trying to cover it up. And yeah, and that is it. That is two, there we go, a little movement. Hey, that was like to move. They're not unhappy. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Do whatever you want. There we go. I got your leg. Just relax your foot. Relax your foot. I can't seem to do it.
There, a little bit. Yeah. I know, a little bound up in there. You, 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 you injured this ankle a lot? Uh, that ankle was hurt in high school. You're able to you're able to bring your foot up higher on this side. This side. See, this one hurts like this especially one? there. Like I can't. Yeah. Stick all the way. I. Yeah. Out. The graininess in there. Do you feel that? Yeah. I There we go. Just tilt your head left and for me. Look, tilt your head left. There we go. Yeah. Oh, shut, shut up. up! I didn't know that. Did that. <laughs> 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 it was on this pocket. That's crazy. I got you. Tilt your head a little bit to the left. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. That's so bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I got you. I won't hurt you. I got you. There we go. Go ahead and tilt a little bit to the right. There we go. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> little adhesions. Tilt your head a little bit to the right. It's okay. There we go. Come over here for me. I get some books behind your head because we don't want your lower neck to do all the bending. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So. Your body, when you bend back, wants to bend the most where it's loose and not very much where it's stiff. Right. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> so your lower neck's going to be like, I'll do it, I'll do it, and then you end up hurting your neck. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're trying to put the roller in your upper back where it's all stiff to help get some circulation and compress. Mainly, at the beginning, it prevents back stepping, so I can use every visit to you. move forward. Yeah. Otherwise, we're doing like three steps forward, two steps back, yeah, yeah. and it's harder to move down the path to changing posture. Yeah. Try to bring your arms up if you can. Let's see. Let me see. Your, I know. Bring your arms. Bring your, both hands. Both hands. There we go. Try to get your arms. Up. Oh, I know. Mommy. Okay. All right. And then bend the elbow a little bit. Yeah. If you just put your hands together. There you go. You okay? Mm -hmm. If it's too difficult, you can put the arms back down. Breathe. Breathe. And then you put the feet together, knees together. Bring your knees left. Stretch. Yeah. I know. Okay. Breathe. Exhale. Try to exhale. Eventually, your knees touch the ground, but today it's fine. Bring your knees right. Come on. Come on. Come on, stretch, breathe, breathe. There you go. It's if it was easy, I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't need <laughs> me in your life, right? <laughs> We're all jumping the gun a little bit. I usually want to do a couple visits. Does that make sense before we yeah. do this? But I wanted to give you a little preview of what this looks like, and while I'm watching you, and this is how you can yeah, I can do this at home, at home for sure. But maybe on the bed, and you need some level of support behind your head. Does that make sense? Yep. It's a yellow piece oh, yeah. that goes between your shoulder blades and it presses. Right you start the above the hump, so the hump, you'd start right above it and then kind of come down on top of it to press the hump in. Yeah. And you just, and it's, and then you move it down right where that pain patch was. You understand? Yeah. You gotta compress it. Yeah. Yep. And you, you, you wiggle and <laughs> you gotta, exactly, you got it. Oh, wow, that's a lot of pain. So I, we're jumping the gun here. You're yeah, yeah, you, you, I got you. Wanna, you'd want to, yeah, you can come on for me. Come up for me when you're ready. Yeah, there we go. You, yeah, I saw, you, you saw a picture of your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of soreness in there. It's about at least four or five visits, six visits to right. get, it's a, it's a, the first time you vacuum. The first time you vacuum, the most comes out. Yeah. Then the next, or a carpet cleaner, right? Then the next pass less, the next pass less. And how many times do you have to make passes with a carpet cleaner? The answer is until it doesn't comes up clear, <laughs> right? Once it's how many passes? I don't know. Depends yeah. on how much is in there. Right. Depends on how big the stains are. Everybody's different. There's a lot in there. I don't know. Maybe ten visits. I don't know. You'd have to keep making passes. But as you as it got cleaner, you'd be able to handle this progressively right. easier and easier. Exactly. And then we stretch. It's, it's, it has to. You have to get to the anterior longitudinal ligament. That's what defines your posture. That's what's defining all that tightness in your back, along with guarding the old injury, car accident 20 years ago, protection. You're gonna have to you know, convince your body that it doesn't need to be guarded and your body's like, no, 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 she might get another accident. And it's, it is tough because it's been, it would've been easier six months or close to the accident to convince your body. I see people nowadays, I see you know, the day of, the next day, soon after a car accident, I'm going in there icing it and then immediately not letting anything heal stiff. Yeah, see, I had no idea okay. the pain okay. in my chest was so great. And sure. I had small babies. Sure. So, no. you know. That's scary. Yeah. Luckily, they weren't in the car. With the accident, my seat broke back onto the wow. car seat. Wow. And that was 
the biggest thing is afterwards I had a lot of nightmares that sure. the kids were in the car oh my because Lord. you know when their kids are little they're sure. with you a lot you know, oh well not Lord. COVID now sure but, well, no, but yeah. then you know the kids were all the time in the car and then for once they weren't in the car and that happened that's wonderful so, I mean it's good I mean, it was really practice. scary when I realized that it had snapped there. back right onto my youngest car seat and she was not even two Angel, oh, angel yeah. saved that or something. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. All right. How's it feel? How are we doing? How we doing? How we doing? I, it feels really okay. good. Keep, keep it doesn't on. feel too bad, really. A lot of monsters. Compared to what it did. All right. Very good. Thank you Thanks so much. much. All right, very good. I really appreciate so it. I'll be back. All right. Sure. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.